So today I'm talking about a Toyota with the P0017 code, what it is and how you go about fixing it. So what is a Toyota P0017 code? Well, it's a crankshaft position, camshaft position, correlation, bank one, sensor B. And what does this mean? Well, the onboard computer uses the crankshaft position sensor and the camshaft position sensor for timing. And it's seeing an issue between these two. So it's gonna have to be troubleshooted to know why. And bank one is always on the side of the engine with the number one cylinder and sensor B would be the second one. And some possible causes could be a bad timing chain or timing belt. You know, it could have slipped a notch or it could be stretched. A bad crank sensor, a bad cam sensor. There could be a loose wiring connection. The timing chain or belt, the guides on there could be could become a loose or damaged. It could be a bad variable valve timing solenoid or low or dirty oil. And so this code is a little bit troublesome because some different things can cause this, but basically there's something going on with the timing. And so there's different ways you can go about troubleshooting this, but I'm going to show you how I would do it. And the first thing I would check would be the timing belt. If, one, if the timing belt slipped a notch or if it became stretched or anything like this, then it could start throwing out these error codes. So this would be the first thing I would check. And there's a way you could check the timing. There would be notches on here with arrows and things like this. You have to Google it for your specific Honda or look for a YouTube video. But basically there'll be some notches that line up with the crank and the cam to be sure that the timing belt hasn't slipped or it hasn't stretched. And so that would be the first thing I would check would be be sure that timing belt is good. And if that all looks good, then the next thing is going to be the variable valve timing solenoid. And the oil flows through this and controls it. So that would be the first thing to go and check when you're looking at this would be be sure that oil the oil level is good, that it's not low or really super dirty or anything like this because this notoriously messes up those variable valve timing solenoids. There's even a little screen in there that could get dirty and clogged up that could cause issues around that. So be sure that oil is at the correct level and it's not dirty. And there's ways you can go about testing these variable valve timing solenoids, or you can replace them however you want to do it. They're just small little cylinders that slide in and out of the engine. There'll be a wiring harness on them, so you want to check that out and be sure there's no opens or shorts or anything like that. And there's usually an intake one and an exhaust one. You'll have to Google it on your particular engine to see what's going on. So there can be some differences. But basically, the next thing to do would be go check out this variable valve timing solenoids. And so if you check that out, you tested or replaced those, you checked out the wiring, that all looks good. Then the next thing to do would be to check out the crankshaft position sensor and the camshaft position sensors. And again, this can vary on their location and even how many there is. There's usually just one crankshaft position sensor and then there'll be like two camshaft position sensors often, but it can vary. So you, again, you have to Google it for your specific Toyota to see exactly what's going on. But this would be the next thing to look at, see if one of these failed. And the crankshaft position sensor will be down by the crank somewhere towards the bottom of the engine. And the cam sensor will be up on top of the engine. Quite often there's two, like this is a 1.8 liter 2012 Toyota Corolla. And you can see right here, they got sensor A, sensor B. Uh, some older ones only had one. So again, it varies. You'll have to Google it to find out exactly where the sensors are located. And after you locate them, be sure to check out the wiring because wiring can cause the same issues as a bad sensor. So the wiring will need to be checked out. These sensors are also on a fuse. It's usually located up on inside the engine compartment. It can't be underneath the dash sometimes, but usually in the engine compartment, we'll have a fuse that if it blows, there won't be no power going to these circuits. And so what do you do if you have a Toyota with the P0017 code? Well, first thing is check that timing belt. Be sure that timing belt hasn't slipped a notch or hasn't stretched or anything like this. Because if that timing does do that, then, then the cam's not going to line up with the crank and it could throw these sensors off. So that would be the first thing I would check. If that all looks good, then I would go check out the variable valve timing solenoid. Since this can affect timing and oil flows through this. So be sure to check that oil. Be sure that it's at the correct level. It's not super dirty or anything like this. There's a small screen with these that notoriously get clogged up and block the flow of oil. But that would be the next thing would be either test or replace the variable valve timing solenoid. And then if that all looks good, then start looking at the crankshaft position sensor and the camshaft position sensors to see if there's anything wrong with these. And these are low cost parts, so most people would just go and swap them out. And then if that didn't fix the problem, then they start looking at the wiring. Since wiring could cause the same issues as a bad sensor. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to give a real quick basic overview of how you go about fixing a Toyota with the P0017 code. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you. Please click like, please click subscribe and have a good day.